So it is my privilege and honor in the next couple minutes to highlight some key accomplishments of the Tucker Center and unveil some new initiatives that we have in the pipeline that will continue to honor our legacy and position and continue to position us as a leader of girls and women in sport. So now I can't talk about all the things we've done, but I am gonna give you some key highlights. None of what I say tonight is possible without our benefactor, Dr. Dorothy Tucker, who is a graduate of the University of Minnesota and the College of Education and Human Development. Her vision and generosity established the Tucker Center as a result of a $1 million gift in 1993. We are forever grateful for her commitment and her vision to help us make a difference. Dr. Kane's vision for becoming the first interdisciplinary research center inspired Dr. Tucker's gift. And when Dr. Kane started looking around the country for people to help her direct the Tucker Center, I was honored um, when she chose me and um, pulled me out of a research center at Notre Dame to come help her direct the Tucker Center. Over the last 25 years, we have developed and invited uh, scholars, leaders, and the best practitioners in the country to help us deliver 41 distinguished lectures, including this one tonight. We have done five video projects. The three most recent, we have partnered with Twin Cities Public Television. Um, the first project we did with TPT, Minnesota, was our uh, 2011 Concussions in Female Athlete documentary, which was Emmy nominated. Our second project with TPT won a regional Emmy Award for Best Sports Documentary. You can applaud. <laughs> and um, none of these video projects would be possible without the passion and commitment um, of our producer, Sherry Lamke from TPT, who's down here in front. Sherry, can you just wait? And the fifth, you might be thinking, well, where's the fifth? I'm gonna unveil that at the end, so that's your teaser. In addition to our documentaries, we have other um, groundbreaking initiatives around women in sport. So how many of you, raise your hands, have heard this phrase that nobody is interested in women's sport and therefore the media don't wanna cover it? I know I've heard it. And what we did in the Tucker Center was start a social media campaign called Here's Proof, where we invite people to post their proof that people are indeed interested in women's sport. You may remember there was an exciting game in the barn in 2017 where the Minnesota Lynx defeated the LA Sparks for the championship. <laughs> And I'm going to say that's interest that there's proof in women's sport. I took that picture, so I know I was there. We produced three uh, widely distributed reports on girls' physical activity. The first report in 1997 was funded by the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sport, and it really helped put us on the map. It was so successful in its scope and impact that we decided to do a follow-up report 10 years later. And um, one of the friends of the Tucker Center, Mary Beth Berry, encouraged us to do another update, which we just released last week. And I am proud to say that is our most complete and comprehensive report to date. And everything I talk about in my brief highlights of the Tucker Center is available free of charge on our website at tuckercenter.org. We're also really proud of the research of Tucker Center affiliated scholar, Dr. Chelsea Thule, who partnered with the College of Design here at the University of Minnesota to um, do the first, and for our knowledge, the only research project on using girls in the community as partners to design and develop their own physical activity clothing. And we know from our data and from anecdotal evidence that it has resulted in a large number of girls who previously weren't able to be physically active 
um, who now are. We are also um, very proud of the many partnerships. The ones that you see here on the screen are just some of the groups and organizations that we co have collaborated with over the years because we know that social change does not happen in a vacuum or alone. And so we partner with other organizations with similar missions. Now part of our network of the groups that we um, collaborate with are Tucker Center affiliated scholars, some of whom are in the audience tonight. And we have affiliated scholars uh, across the University of Minnesota and around the United States and as far as New Zealand, Japan, and the UK. And these affiliated scholars help us really amplify the scope and the mission of the Tucker Center. Over the last 25 years, we have um, started six scholarships and fellowships for students, including our summer internship program, which is a paid internship um, due to the generous support of donors. And I can tell you, working with this group of people that their work that they do with us is priceless. Now, speaking of priceless, um, the Tucker team that Dr. Kane and I um, direct is made up of the best and the brightest undergrads, masters, and doctoral students um, who are passionate about gender and sport. And they are a valuable part of our work. And they're um, somewhere in the back there. Hi, team. <laughs> and so um, they, nothing like this, these great events and all the research we put together is not possible without them. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the glue of the Tucker Center, Jonathan Sweet. <laughs> so I have come to learn that Lindsay, um, who was our first official intern before we had an official uh, internship program, fondly calls Jonathan J. Sizzle. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's going to stick, Jonathan. <laughs> we are often called, uh, our research is often cited in local, regional, and national media outlets, and we are often called upon sometimes daily for our critique and commentary around girls and women in sport. So the last five years, the impact of our work has grown and become an even more world-renowned. In particular, our research on women in sport leadership, including women coaches, which is our focus tonight. To that end, we started the Women Coaches Symposium in 2014 that provides women coaches of all levels and all sports to come together to network, have a unique professional development opportunity and to build community. I know there's many in the audience who have attended our coaching symposiums. Can you just raise your hand? Awesome. And from the first symposium and 100 participants, it's grown to a sold out capacity of 350 coaches. And to our knowledge, it is the largest of its kind in the world. Part of the Women Coaches Symposium, and to honor Jean Freeman, who is a legendary and longtime uh, Gopher Women Swim Coach, we started an endowment in her name, which allows us to bring top-level women coaches to keynote the Women Coaches Symposium. And those coaches include NCAA, WNBA, and World Cup and Ivy League Championship coaches. So we get to hear from the best and the brightest in the coaching world. In 2013, we started the Women College Coaching Report Card to raise awareness of this issue, to stimulate a national dialogue, and to hold decision makers accountable for their hiring practices of coaches. Since our first report card, we have had um, report cards that give grades to institutions, sports, and conferences at all NCAA levels. And I can tell you that this data is in high demand, and people are paying attention. I've also learned ADs don't like getting grades. <laughs> and you can tell from this infographic, which is from our data in the College Coaching Report Card, um, that this is the top seven most powerful Division I conferences. And um, you can see there's a lot more Ds and Fs than As and Bs. And we are proud to say 
that Minnesota performs very well compared to their peer institutions. And we like to say that Minnesota is just above average. And if we gave pluses and minuses, we'd give them a strong B plus. <laughs> and I would like to say that I think it's important to acknowledge that Gopher Athletics has, has a long and historical tradition of recruiting higher and retaining uh, head uh, women for their head coaching positions, including our panelists tonight. One of the questions we often got when we people would see this infographic in the report card is they would scratch their head and ask us, well, what are the A and B schools doing? Because one of the myths, which is untrue, is that there aren't enough qualified women to be able to hire at this level, which we know is not true. We didn't know the answer, so we got funding from the NCAA Office of Inclusion, where we interviewed ADs at all levels on their best practices. And this report is available online, and we just released it this summer. Now, I've mentioned our focus is on building scholarships for students. And every summer, we award a Borton Fellow. And this is to honor the legacy of Pam and her commitment and passion um, pertaining to women in leadership. And speaking of Pam Borton, we've invited her as an honored guest tonight because she is and remains the winningest coach for Gopher Women's Basketball to date. So thank you, Pam. Okay. Winding down the calendar, in 2016, I edited and co-wrote a book with many Tucker Center affiliated scholars that was an award winner for um, the publishing house of Rutledge. So in addition to our reports and our book, um, we also publish frequently in top tier peer reviewed academic journals, including our most recent article that Dr. Kane and I wrote that is there in the middle. So as I alluded to, our fifth video project with TPT is called Game On, Women Can Coach, subtitle, and Do Coach Very Well, I might add, is premiering November 10th, just a few weeks. And you get to see a sneak peek of the documentary tonight, just 30 seconds worth. Once it became clear that Title IX was going to take women's sports into the big time, then there was this gender stereotype. We have to get the real head coaches involved, meaning male head coaches. I really want them to have female coaches, and that's something that's lacking right now. In every other workplace, having a diverse and gender balanced workforce is really important. Athletics is really lagging behind. 